Okay, so this is another video in our PV commission and test series. Okay, what I want to do now is a insulation resistance test. But we also want to include something else in, in this little clip, okay? And that's the use of DC isolators on um, PV systems. My inverter's got its own isolator, which really means I don't need a separate isolator for this system. And if you think about it, this is a DC isolator, you can see it here. If I install this and run my two tails into here from, from my PV panels and come out into the bottom of the inverter. When I isolate it, actually all I'm isolating is these two bits of wire going into the inverter. The stuff from the incoming side of the isolator back to the panels, still light, still alive, because obviously in daylight, they're gonna be live all the time. So is it worth doing? The choice is yours. However, what is important is that we can carry out the tests safely. So an isolator screwed to the wall will facilitate us being able to take those tests. I've made myself a tiny well, a bit of kit really out of a DC isolator so that I can do the tests and I can just carry this around wherever I go and it works for me. This enables me to do the short circuit test where I need to connect the two cables together and use a clamp meter and it also allows me to do an insulation resistance test where I can join the two ends of the string together and test from here okay that's important and that's the test we're going to do it in a minute but anyway first of all DC isolators they are a cause of problems in some instances what we've got to remember is that Every time we install something on a PV system, it needs to be 1.25 times greater than the maximum current or voltage. My panels now, they're, they're increasing in current all the time. My panels give me a value of 14 amps. Okay, so on the face of it, a 16 amp uh, isolator will do the trick. In reality, if I multiply 14 by 1.25, in other words, it's 25% greater, I'm going to get 17 and a half amps. So that means I've got to use a 20 amp isolator. Really, really important, okay, because they do burn out. What I want to show you now is A, what I've done to make this a useful bit of kit, and B, what you should do when you're connecting a an isolator. Okay, so let's look at what you do when you're connecting an isolator first. If you look on page 174 of the regs, you'll see that it tells us multi-stranded cables, the ends need to be treated. Okay, so what that really means is that we crimp most of our multi-stranded cables. And if you look, you can see I've crimped the cables in this isolator. If you don't crimp the cables, what happens is they're multi-stranded, so there's lots of strands. When they get hot, they expand. When they cool down, they shrink. And over a period of time, those ends separate. You end up with a loose connection, pardon me, and it generates heat. That heat then burns this stuff out. So we need to be very, very careful. Always crimp multi-stranded cables, vital. Okay, what I've done here is I've linked the bottom of this isolator out so that when I turn it on, it joins the ends of the string together. That facilitates me being able to do a short circuit test. I also join the ends together here and it allows me to do an insulation resistance test, which is what we're going to be looking at now. Okay, so I'm going to put this together while I'm talking. For an insulation resistance test, I need to test between the PV rails, and again, I need to take them a set at a time. So, you know, there's more than one PV rail on the roof, two rails to a panel. Um, so we need to do the rows. Each row we need to do a test on. I need to join the two ends of a string together. Once you've joined them together, they remain quite safe. It's a bit like a current transformer, really. And then between the joined together ends to a rail, 
I need to do an insulation resistance test, okay? And I need to do the insulation resistance test at twice the working voltage. So as we saw with my, my um, open circuit voltage test, I'm working at around 250 volts will be fine. So what I'll do is I'll join, first of all, the four string together, like so, okay? It's off at the moment. You always make sure it's off, otherwise you'll end up with sparks going everywhere. I use an insulation resistance tester, and I have a lead here, which I can plug in to the end, like so. So now I've got my two ends of the string joined together. When I turn it on, they'll feed down into here. I've also got a lead which goes to one of my rails. I join that there. Okay, so now I turn it on. Turn my meter off first. I turn this on. As you can see, I'm using my trusty old mega again. <laughs> Can't help it, can I? Um, turn it to 500 volts, push the button, and I'm gonna get a reading of some kind. Okay, so you can see it's creeping up a little bit. I'm about 900 mega ohms. One mega ohm is the minimum, so this is fine. That's telling me that there's no connection between any of my cables and the rails and the panels. Everything is perfect. Don't worry about doing a 500 volt test. It won't damage the panels because the ends are joined together, okay? Before I do anything, I need to turn this off, obviously, because it's DC. Once I've turned it off, I can disconnect. Job done. That's the insulation resistance test.